from the EQC studio, welcome to the Top Step with Ryan Mullen Smith. How are we going, mates? Welcome back to another episode of the Top Step. My name is Ryan Roland Smith. I'm inside the EQC studios. Special thanks to Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. We have got an amazing episode for you this week. Taylor Saucedo, one of my favorites, is jumping on right after the break. You know he went viral on Monday night. He was just like us. He was freaking out. The Mariners came back against the New York Yankees. He was on Twitch. I just learned what that was, actually. I didn't even know what Twitch was. But I'm going to talk to Taylor Saucedo about that, talk about him coming back from injury, uh, and talk about his career. I can't wait to have Taylor join the top step. Before we move on, make sure you go to YouTube. You can go subscribe at the Top Step TV. You can see all the past episodes, the full-length interviews. Most of the time, my guests, we talk for a good hour. Go check that out. You can also listen, by the way. I, I always forget to mention this. You can listen if you're driving along. Anywhere you get your podcast, this show is in podcast form. All right, like we do it every single week, we kick off the Top Step with what is trending with the Seattle Mariners in this week's Top Trends. So check out these numbers. This stat is brought to you by ilovebaseball.org. If you go to ilovebaseball.org, you can see the amazing things they do. You can even sponsor a player for $39 a month. Look at these numbers. Luke Rayley has been going off the first 15 days of the month of May. He's hitting 417, 11 run runs, three doubles, three home runs. And I love the speed element too. We're going to get into that in just a second. But Luke Rayley, how about what he is doing right now? He is definitely trending up for the Seattle Mariners. He got off to a slow start in the month of April. And partially because, and he talked about earning at bats. Part of the reason is, man, when you, when you come to a new team, you're trying to get your footing. You're trying to get established. Let's not forget too, really last year was the first chance he got to play as an everyday player he was kind of he was platooning a little bit left-handed bat but now all of a sudden with a couple of these injuries and the way things are shuffled out with Dom Canzone going down he's back now JP Crawford he's back now so it's going to be interesting to see how they shuffle this but when you get a chance to play every day and you have that opportunity to be in the lineup every single day I really think good things happen so if you take a little deeper dive into this little stretch run he's had in the month of May. A couple of things that really, really stand out uh, for Luke Rayley. First of all, the month of May, the swing and miss rate is way down. It's 23.8%. That's the lowest he's ever been on the swing and miss rate. The other part of this is too, he's been getting the most amount of breaking balls he's ever gotten in his career. So usually when you start figuring stuff out, the, the breaking balls come, the swing and miss will go up a little bit because you're not getting fed fastballs all day long. The other part of this with, with, with this with Luke Rayleigh, He's been way more aggressive. In the past, I know this is kind of like a Tampa thing, right? The on-base percentage. Luke has been way more aggressive, swinging way early in count. So uh, it's got me thinking, maybe it's a situation where he's coming out of the gates. The Mariners have said, look, you're six foot, what are you, what are you six foot three, uh, so, sorry, six foot four, 235 pounds. Let it eat, big man. Get that bat head out and let it go. And he's been doing that way more aggressive early in counts. The other part about getting the bat head out, this guy has been pulling the ball way more. You're starting to hear that, right? You're starting to hear around the league, especially with the Mariners, pull the ball. It's, it's okay. Usually, like the, the, the uh, I know Edgar Martinez was the master of going the other way, hitting the ball to right center field if you're a right-handed hitter. But some dudes, and if you're Luke Rayleigh, you're young, you're big, you're strong, man, get that bat head out. I've talked to more and more hitters now talking about, you know what, I really need to pull the ball with authority. And when you pull the ball and you get on that better attack angle, guess what? The ball goes in the air. So you start to see some really, really good patterns. I talked about the breaking ball. He's hitting 300 off breaking ball, so he's covering that part of it. He's been getting some mistakes that he's been absolutely crushing. But the biggest thing that I love when I'm watching Luke Rayleigh do his thing, and it's old school, but I love it when you see big guys run. It's the speed factor. Do you realize Luke Rayley is just one foot per second, just a little lower than Julio Rodriguez? He's the second fastest guy on the team. He's in the 86th percentile when it comes to speed. Remember that game on Monday night when it's the ninth inning and you've got Clay Holmes pitching, who, by the way, hadn't given up an earned run. And then all of a sudden, uh, you've got Rojas grounds out, Julio ground ball uh, single speed. Thank you. Um, then all of a sudden, Cal Raleigh, walk. Now, you've got a, you've got Luke Rayleigh coming up. If you've got a big six foot four, 
power hitter coming up, and he hits the ball the way he did down the second base, man, you've got plenty of time. You can get that big out. There's two outs. But no, he's got the speed. So what do you do? You rush, um, and, and look what happened. All of a sudden, that inning absolutely broke open. So I'm not sitting here saying that I need every six foot four dude to have speed. It's just that extra element. You talk about the fact he's hitting 417 in this early part of, uh, of the month of May in this first 15 games. A lot of that is because of speed, man. I, I, I love it. So you heard Scott Service talking about how hard he plays. Man, this has been a huge attribute for the Seattle Mariners offensively when you have Luke Rayleigh doing what he's thinking. One last thing on Luke before we move on and get to Taylor Salcedo. He made a comment a couple weeks ago. He said, you have to earn your at-bats. Talking about when uh, you're in a situation when you're coming off the bench and you're going to get put in the lineup. I love hearing that, man, when guys are like, oh, you know what? It wasn't this. I was waiting for my turn. No, no, no. You have to earn those at-bats. Earn those at -bats. When he said that, I'm like, oh, I mean, this is one of my favorite players. And that's why Luke Rayleigh is trending up and he is a big part of the top trend. All right. After the break, we have got... Taylor Saucedo, we're going to talk to him about the Monday night viral Twitch, Twitter, social media video, whatever it was. He's coming right. He's going to join me here in the EQC studios. Don't go anywhere. Keep it right here on the top step. I live in Tacoma, and I'm all about the action. From making a run at the tables multiple pay lines on my favorite machines. Game time. The sportsbook is better than being on the 50-yard line or sitting courtside. I'm here for it. Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. This is why you don't freak out. You play nine innings of baseball. You don't play eight, you don't play seven, you don't play six, you don't play five, you don't play one. You play nine eggs. All right, welcome back inside the EQC studios and back to the top step. I've got a very special guest who made uh, headlines, viral headlines, if you want to call. That's what the kids call them these days. Taylor Saucedo, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Now, I'm referring to Monday night, Yankees game. You're sitting at home. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, you're on Twitch and you, are you playing video games or are you just watching the game? What are you doing on Twitch at that point? Uh, we were doing a bit of both. We had the game going and then I was sitting there playing games in between. And uh, yeah, I mean, things kind of got crazy in that ninth inning. Like I was like, I had it on like to my left and like really wasn't paying attention. And then I look over to my chat to the right like I have like all the chat stuff to the right and yeah. everyone's going nuts and then I look over and like Hanniger just hit the because uh, I was delayed um, and he just hit right. the, his single or whatever and and I'm like what is going on I didn't I didn't see any of this and then it was just <laughs> it was on from there that's awesome now how hard is it dude like when you go down with an injury you're on a team how hard is a man sitting out like or, or I mean I, I, I guess you're coming back pretty soon, so it's not too bad. But for me, I've always felt like I was in the way. Like, I felt like, oh, man, I'm just like, I'm, I'm taking up space here, taking up room. I just want to get back. You feel like just you're not contributing at all. Is it? What's the experience been like for you with the Mariners now that you're one of the dudes on that team? Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks. I mean, it just sucks. Like like you said, you, just, you do you do feel like you're in the way a lot, like, especially in Minnesota, like I was just hobbling around, just like, yeah, yeah. I just felt, you know, worthless. Um, and so it just sucks. Like, you know, my whole thing is like, I just, I love, I love to be out there. And, you know, when it's taken away from me, I'm just kind of like, like, what do I do now? And so, um, you know, you're just kind of trying to, remain positive as much as you can you know but i always tell myself i'm not the first person to get hurt i'm not the last person to get hurt right you know, other people have been in my situation way worse than me and so yeah. you know like i just take it day by day and you know i love being a fan again in a way though like i've kind of enjoyed that like obviously growing up watch the mariners all the time but now since i've been with them obviously it's been different i've been here as a player but and then now, since I've been out, I get to kind of see it from a fan point of view and, 
You know, it's a little bit more nerve wracking, you know, because you kind of feel like when you're in it, like it's not as as yeah. nervous, but now watching it, it's like, oh, what, what can I do? <laughs> you know, you want to help out, you want to get out there, and it's just like, but it's fun. Top Step with Ryan Roland Smith is presented by EQC, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. You grew up a Mariners fan. You moved from Japan to Seattle when you were six years old. What got you into baseball? Uh, I mean, I started over there in Japan. Like, I just, my parents always said, like, they knew I was going to play sports. Like, anytime, like, my one of my first words was, like, ball. Um, and... They just said that I just was always drawn to it. Like, it was the only thing that could, like, keep me quiet. Just anything. Like, they'll just put a ball in my hand. And so I just started playing over there and, and just kind of took off. I mean, honestly, though, baseball was my least favorite sport out of all the sports that I did play. Um, but it was also the one that I was the best at. So uh, it just kind of worked out that way. Who was who were the who were the guys you looked up to? If you're a Mariners fan, who were the players you looked up to? Um, like early on, like it was John Allerud. I just loved his like oh, slow, dude. Slow dude, that was swing. that was my favorite player growing up. It, but Blue Jays, John Allerud, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was 1993 World Series. That was my guy. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, continue. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. That's awesome. uh, and I would say probably like Felix was definitely number one, and then Mike Cameron. Um, was up there too. Oh, yeah. Now, before before Mariner days, right, before you roll into camp with them, you mentioned you had to sharpen some things up. If you can go back to what you thought you had to get sharpened up back then, it's obviously different now looking back because you've been around different people and, and you figured some stuff out. But going back to them, when, when, what, what did you need to sharp, sharpen up? What, what, what do you mean by that? Um, so when I was with the Blue Jays, like their main focus was Velo. Like they wanted Velo. Yeah. And so I was just doing things that I'm that just wasn't really me. Um, like I was throwing from way over the top. Like my sinker really wasn't that good, and um, and like I didn't really have a change up. Um, and you know I didn't throw my curveball very much or my slider. Like it was just kind of like right. just it was just very vanilla uh, when you look at things, like especially analytically. Um, and I remember sitting there. In the office, very Roland Smith by the sounds of it. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> and, uh, Sorry, keep going. <laughs> I uh, I remember just sitting there and I'm like, what makes me good? Like, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm funky. Like, I've always thrown from a low quarter slot. I'm not, I'm not this guy. Like, I understand what the Blue Jays are looking for, you know, especially for like extension, all that stuff. Like, I, I got it, but that's just not me. Yeah. And, right. um, I just was like, you know, I need to go back and look analytically of like, can I get better with my sinker? Um, I need to find a change up if I'm gonna try and neutralize righties. Like, the slider's just not gonna cut it. Like, the curveball is, is more of a get me over early in. Like, so it's just like really went and just enhanced everything and went back to what makes me really good and just being weird and funky. And yeah. uh, that was the one thing that. I was drawn to with the Mariners when I got here. There wasn't a conversation of like, we need you to throw harder. We need more, you know, horizontal or vert on these pitches. Like there was nothing. They just said, hey, you already have a good frame. Now just use it and throw it over the box. Like just throw it in the box. That's all you need to do. And the rest will take care of itself. He's like, just go out there and do your thing. And I was like, Okay, I can do that. Who, who said that to you? Who, who was saying those words it to was, you? Uh, it was Woody. It was Pete Woodworth. And, okay. Uh, man, he, what, what is it with him, man? Like, I mean, we're talking, you know, I'm talking like going back to Second Rider, Seawall, Topa, you, Gabe Spire. Um, you know, list goes on. Like, what what is it that, that the Mariners do when you, I mean, I'm sitting here going, man, like, you know, I, I like to crap on my career all the time, but like, I sometimes I think, oh, you know, if I had some of these voices, I had the most random advice, like, oh, you need to do this, like, really, like, you're just coming up with something just because you you got to. But what is it about, like, whether it be Woody or whoever it is, and when you get to put on a Mariners uniform, 
Right here you are, like you know, that's your, that's your team, man. Like you're all fired up because you you it's your home, it's your your, your team you, you you grew up watching. But like regardless of that, when you go into uh, be a Seattle Mariner, like it, it, it's just simply put, just it can't just be that simple. Like just be yourself. Right? It, what is it? Like I mean, how does this work? It it really is that simple, and I think I think a lot of the guys too that when you get there, like especially for me, is like. I remember eating lunch and sitting there with Paul Seawald like after the day was done and like we haven't really had a conversation up to that point um, and we were just chatting and like he was kind of telling me like his career, my career, like we were just going back and forth and he was like, have you had your meeting yet? And I was like, no. And he was like, it's going to be a good one. Like, he's like, everything that they say in there, like there's a reason why. Uh, they're saying it to you like it's not just gonna be like hey cookie cutter like you need to do this everybody else is doing this it's like they brought you in here because they there's something that makes you really good and they're gonna tell you to utilize that and I would just listen to them he goes it changed my career you know for me like Paul he was like for me they were just wanted me to you know upshoot fastballs up in the zone slider like it was simple like I wasn't trying like Prior to coming here, I was trying to dot, like go corners, like, you know, like now it's just throw your best stuff top of the zone, then slider, let that figure it out. And when I when I went into that meeting with them, you know, they showed me all these numbers, like what guys are getting, like the average on, you know, 1-0 counts, 2-0 counts, 3-0 counts, 1-1, um, 1-2. One, 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 and when you're looking at it yeah. from like this, like, grand scheme of things instead of just being like oh I gave up a homer on this pitch like no they're like right. gave up a homer on this pitch and it only happened one time out of the 75 other times you've thrown it like don't like don't ever go away from that right. and, yeah for me it's like yeah and there was other things they were like talking about my sinker and four seam and they were like you your batting average against your four seam is this like why don't you throw your four seam more like and they just kind of opened up a whole new playbook for me of like, where like I thought I had to be certain way with certain hitters, but they were just like, you need to just be this all the time with everybody and you're gonna be more than fine. And I was like, okay. And they asked me, it was like an hour long meeting and they asked me at the end, they're like, have you ever had a meeting like this? I was like, never. And I just rode with it after that. And I remember when Trent got here, um, last year as well, he went and had his meeting and he walked out of there. He's like, dude, I've never had a meeting like that. I was like, dude, I started, really? I said the same thing. Like, it's, it's insane. He's like, he's like, how long were we with the Blue Jays? And not once did they ever relay any information like this whatsoever. And like, you just always see guys who have come into this org and uh, they're just like, dude, this place is awesome. Like, all the information they're giving us, like, they don't try and change you yeah. from any certain way. Like you're here because you're already good at what you do. We don't need to change you. We just need to be able to enhance it in some way. And it was just, it, it's really fun to watch. And, and it's not a shocker that they get all these guys who are trying to find their way in this league. And then you come in there yeah. and they're like, why is this guy so good? What is he doing differently? And it's nothing. They're just taking the best of him and finally utilizing it and not making him change. So it's just, it's really fun to watch. I live in Tacoma, and I'm all about the action. From making a run at the tables, to multiple pay lines on my favorite machines. Game time. The sportsbook is better than being on the 50-yard line or sitting courtside. I'm here for it. Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. We've got Taylor Saucedo with us. We've got the How to Speak Australian segment brought to you by the Kangaroo and Kiwi in Ballard. Have you ever been to the Kangaroo and Kiwi? Uh, yes. Okay. I have. All right, okay, good. Nice. Aussie I've pub. Also, it's weird. I've also been What's to that? Australia. Um, so. Oh, really? Yeah, I played there in Australia. I played for Canberra, Calvary. Um, I, dude, did you play in the ABL? I had no idea yeah. you played in the ABL. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had no we idea. We actually went to the championship that year, and we lost to Brisbane. And when they they won, like, three or four in a row that year, which their field, what, they What year be, was this? 
2017 or 28. I think it was, yeah, it was 2017 or 2018. I can't remember. Um, no, it must have been 2018 because I, I played for Brisbane for a month in 2017. Okay, yeah. So then it was, then it was one of those two. But yeah, I played. I played in Canberra. We went to the championship that year. We lost. I think Brisbane's field should be vetoed out. And it's like fences are like three hundred all the way around. You hit a pop up, it's it, gone. It's a band box, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, dude. I, dude, I had no idea, man, that you played yeah. in the ABL. I can't believe it. Well, you're going to get this easy then. What am uh, I? What am I think? Okay. All right. Well, let's put you. Well, I'm going to put you to the test. You, Taylor Saucedo, you've been to Australia. You played there. How long were you in Australia for? Three months. Three months. Oh, man, you're going to get. You, you're going to get this easy. All right. The, the How to Speak Australian word brought to you by the kangaroo and kiwi is chock-a-block. What does chock-a-block mean? Uh, never, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that one, I, I didn't hear that one when I was there. <laughs> well, by the way, I, I've got a couple options here, and I went for like the, the extreme one. I went for the, the black run here because it's a, it's a tough one. Chock-a-block, I'll give you a sentence. See if you can, see if you can, uh, see if you can, if you can answer this one. All right. Okay. Um, all right, we're, we're playing the I'm going to give you a good sentence here. Um, oh, we're playing the we're playing the bandits. Man, good crowd. It was chock a block. <laughs> oh, I I I have no. I can't even. I can't even. I don't even know. It sounds like you're trying to chuck a block. Like you're gonna chuck a block. <laughs> no, it means full. Like it's full. Like 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 the the parking lot is chock a block. Right? It's full. That's what it means. Oh my god, oh. not even close. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I went with that one. So I've just given the answer, but if you do if you do want to give your interpretation of Chocker Block, go to put hashtag TTS mate over at Twitter or an Instagram or in the comments in YouTube uh, and you can play along. But uh, that's brought to you by the Kangaroo and Kiwi, the one and only Australian pub. And I can't believe Taylor saw so did you but you were there for three months, no chocolate blocks, not in no, Canberra? Ne- not one time uh, did I ever hear somebody say that. God, I, what kind of teammates are we talking about? I was about? man. I was I was called a uh, a bogan. Didn't love that. A bogan. I, I Dude, found out that's I what, found out what that was. So I didn't love that. That's my that's my nickname on the radio and on seven ten. You got <laughs> really? you you've jumped on with You've jumped on with Wyman and Bob. They call yeah. me. They, they say we're, we're, we're good. Our Bogan joining us. That's my nickname on the radio, dude. There you go, the Bogan. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, awesome. Yes, you've definitely been to Australia. Chocker Block, by the way, is Grant Balfour. Do you know who Grant Balfour is? Oh yeah, Balfour Rage. Oh yeah, that dude, that's his favorite word, man. He says <laughs> Chocker Block literally every other sentence. He loves it. So Taylor, listen, man, this has been so much fun. I don't want to keep you too long, even though you do have some spare time, but not for long. I am excited to see you back, man. Your your story is awesome when you burst on the scene last year you're killing it you're going to keep killing it it's it's good to have you in a mariner's uniform and uh i appreciate your time and hopefully you can come back on yeah absolutely anytime all right special thanks to taylor saucedo i love that dude man and if you want to check out the full length interview go to at the top step tv we talk for like an hour we talk about everything from twitch to his um, upbringing we talk about his dad working on the train actually so go check it out at the top step tv youtube go subscribe so you can go check out all the extra content full length interviews all the past episodes special thanks to emerald queen casino the entertainment capital of the north west we will see you next week mates we are chock a block all weekend have a good weekend we'll see you next week right here on the top step